Hey guys, my name is Parag Pal and welcome back in this new video. In this video, I am going to discuss about the loading calculation for the G plus 3 story building. Because in this video, as we are considering G plus 3 story building, the wind load and earthquake loading is not considered because it is a not applicable more than the 4 story building. Okay, so for that more than 4 story building is required. So let's get consider. So here first I need to clear that the self weight calculations of the all structural members are calculated by the software itself. Because if it is ETAB, if it is StatPro, okay, all softwares they have their own provisions for a gravity loadings due to which they can calculate the self weight of the overall structural member. So you no need to provide the dead load of the structural members, right? But we need to provide the dead load of the wall, floor finish, the live load and all. Okay, for that we are using the IS code 875 part 1, part 2, part 3, part 4 and part 5. IS code part 1 and part 2 is respectively for the dead load and live load. Part 3 is for the wind loading. Okay, for earthquake load loading there is a different uh, IS code is available. Part 4 is for the snow loading and part 5 is for the load combinations. As already we have the load combination is as score 4, 5, 6 as we discussed in a lecture number 1 and 2. Okay, the load combinations we already have. So here what we have to do is just first calculate the slab load. So you can see the dead load over here. So dead load is calculated by the 0.12 into density of concrete into 1 is a unit. So you will get a dead load but we are not going to use the dead load over here. We will calculate the live load first. So live load is calculated from the IS code 875 part number 2. So you can see over here, okay, for a residential building from the clause of 3.1, 3.1.1 and 4.1.1, the imposed floor load for the different occupancies is given in uniformly distributed load in kiloton per meter square. So you can see it for a dwelling houses, if all rooms and kitchens, toilet and bathroom, okay, corridor, passage, staircases, we need to use this kind of the loading cases. But here we are using only 2 kiloton because we are, don't have, we don't have the balconies and all. Okay, we have staircases but we will use only 2 kiloton over here. Okay, that's why I use 2 kiloton. Now how to calculate the floor finished load? So this floor finished load is calculated from all these loading conditions. Okay, so first of all the dam proofing. Okay, basically according to IS code 456, okay, okay, here the table number, in table number 1, so for related to the, you know, the, pay, in table number 1, clause uh, 28, so failed bitumen and waterproofing and dam proofing clause is already given, but for that no any loading condition is provided that's why we never cons never can never consider any value for that but if you want to consider you can consider 0.1 kilonewton per meter right and this is only applicable for the ground floor because we just apply this particular loading for like we just provide one coating for that to not allow the capillary action from the ground level to your or uh, internal uh, like to your the dam proofing course okay that's why we are providing with some plastic sheet and all so that's for for that we need to consider only 0.1 kiloton per meter now flooring how we can consider for a load for a flooring let's get delete all these things so i can discuss with you properly for flooring what we have to do just go over here okay in, the, in this flooring there is a different different kind of flooring are available okay this particular snap is took from the IS code 875 part 1 where the asphalt flooring and different structural floorings are available. If you want to pro provide the asphalt flooring you can consider this thickness we have like asphalt, macadam, okay and compressed rock 10 mm is a thickness okay for that you can provide this particular loading condition 0 0.22, 0 0.26 and 0 0.04 but if you want to provide the hollow clay uh, block including the reinforcement, motor joining concrete topping of this particular thickness so you can provide this of the floor finished loading condition like for the if I want to 100 mm thickness of the floor finish you can provide 1.47 but now I just want to provide the thickness of okay 150 mm so you can just make it half of that so it will be equal to 0.735 so you can provide 0.735 over here okay that's it most of the people never provide this kind of flooring and this flo flooring can provide at the top only 
okay most of the people but this flooring is provided for the you know fixing of the tiles also right so now for roofing also we need to provide proper you know flooring so for that we use IS code 875 part 1 in that we have different different kind of the roofing okay so most of the people provide the terracotta okay these particular type types of the roofing over there terracotta is a roofing which is provided for the you know if you want to pro if you know don't know the terracotta terracotta is a different kind of the roofing material which is which is used to show the different kind of the elevations and uh, uh, you know different kind of the moderation in the elevation houses so for that we have this kind of the loading conditions but we have the very flat uh, roof okay so for that we are providing okay in roofing itself the tiles is given okay but for that you can you can see very well okay here the glazing roofing they provided glazing is very different thing just you need to consider this tiles loading as a roofing tile itself okay so you just need to select the 1.67 over here okay for roofing so for roofing itself you can consider the flooring height okay because if you are providing the tiles at the roofing level then you should consider this value if you are not providing any tiles on that on the roofing level so you no need to consider any sort of loading for that you can just consider the flooring value or less than of that so i am considering only 0 0.5 okay now the tiles let's coming to the tiles you can see okay you can see if you want to provide the manglo tiles with batons okay so usually you can provide a loading of 1.67 because it is a very higher one okay so you can use marble also just i am providing 1.67 loading conditions for my tiles now coming to the ceiling one ceiling is also very important and this is only applicable for the intermediate excluding the ground floor okay excluding the ground level if you are if you are providing the loading for the ground level just exclude that and rest all the intermediate floor are applicable for the ceiling loading right so if i am going to provide the concrete uh, cement concrete or the uh, tile or concrete loading okay on the both side so if the you are you know thickness is 1 is to 3 2 is to 5 okay or 2 is to 5 centimeter so you need to provide this kind of loading so i am considering only 0 0.25 over here right so just select and write 0 0.25 right after that you will get total loading as like this but this loading we know we no need to consider we need to consider only this minus of the dead load only this much loading we need to consider after that we will go for a wall loading here you can see the wall we have for our overall you know span but most of the cases the terrace loading also we need to consider okay because we have the parapet wall also from the IS code 875 we have one clause from the table number one of clause number 13 in which the wall load is given where the density of wall is 19 and where density of plaster is 20 so the wall load we calculate where the wall thickness is 230 mm and the plaster is 0 0.012 meter so wall load per square meter is calculated as 0 0.23 into density plus plaster into 2 because we provide plaster in the both direction and multiply with the density of plaster so we got 4.85 kN per square meter after that if your height of the floor is 3 kN the sorry 3 meter then you need to multiply this 3 meter value with this wall load so you will get total wall load as 14.55 so this is what we manually calculated but as per and we don't know the for which particular brick we are using but in the IS code they provided for a common burnt clay brick for engineering brick heavy duty bricks press brick refractory brick sand cement bricks so you can use this kind of the loading conditions so usually you can take the round up for the 24 kilowatt for that so it is very higher loading conditions from our side after that for the same for the terrace loading the density of the the height for the parapet wall is 1 meter and the density is 4.9 kilowatt newton kilowatt per meter so you just you just need to multiply this with height the density with respect to the height you will get the total load as a 4.9 after that let's just calculate the total loading over here so in slab loading just we need to calculate the ground loading first so ground loading is calculated by select equals to come over here so first we need to provide a lie load also okay the floor finish also okay right that's it 
but in this floor finish we need to exclude few things so just select minus okay and in uh, like in ground floor just remove this ceiling okay right and remove this roofing right that's it and click enter so you will get 5.405 as a load of the ground floor why because on the ground floor we never provide the ceiling and all these things okay yes the slab of the loading is different I am I am I am providing this 5.4055 and the damp proofing course level, not on a slab, right? Right? Okay. So now on the top floor, it means the roofing, the top floor, the uh, like where is our open to air slab over there? At that point, we need to provide the loading. That will be equals to the lie load. We consider very minute lie load over there. But just select the two kiloton, whatever it is, because for a further calculation, we need to select this one. If you want to further construct your building up upper direction, just select this one. Plus the flooring, plus consider the roofing, okay. Plus consider the ceiling, okay. That's it. Now, if you want to consider tiling tiles for the further calculation, you need to select this one, okay, and click OK. You will get 5.155. And the intermediate slabs for that what you have to select, select equals to okay, the lie load plus floor load minus of this damp proofing. Okay, right? Okay, that's it. And you will get this all the value. So if your total load, if you need to provide this overall load combinations to your, you know, the uh, total structural element. Okay, this ground floor, top floor and intermediate floor wise. Right now, let's come to the wall loading. So, your wall loading you need to provide as the 24 or 14. It depends on you. So, I'm selecting the 24 for the major factor because it is provide me very good calculations. So, I'm selecting the 24 kiloton and the parapet wall I'm selecting as the 4.9. Okay, so this particular kind of the loading pattern, excluding the dead load of the element, I need to provide for my. Uh, overall calculations of the building so in next video when we look for these kind of the loading calculations first we will go for the autocad file and then we will jump on our main etap analysis of building okay have a nice day bye bye